Get ready to close out this conference as we have taken you from home to the marketplace. I am here to introduce Pastor Carol A. Walker, Senior Pastor of No Limits International Ministries. Pastor Carrie is a transform transformational leader, a trailblazer, visionary, life coach, and entrepreneur. She is best characterized by her love for people and often sacrifices her time, talents, needs, and wants to accommodate the needs of others by helping to empower them to live a blessed and abundant life. Okay, Pastor Carol Walker has a bachelor's degree in business administration and she is currently pursuing her master's degree in clinical psychology. In addition to being educational certified, Pastor Walker is also certified in spiritual warfare. Ladies, I want everybody to please stand up. Everybody, please stand up. This woman of God, as you guys can see, she is working for the kingdom. She is working for the people of God. She has a love for Christ, a love for people. God is using her. And there is no limits, no boundaries. There is increase all around this woman of God. Let's all welcome her as she is us. It's time to level up. So take us there, Pastor. Take us there. No limits. All right, now set no limit. No boundaries. Look around and say, there's no limits. Begin to stretch your arm that said no limits. Now you're gonna break forth. Say God, increase me. From now, enlarge my territory. they'll never see you. So ladies, I have a question to ask you. I, I think I think everybody has a um, napkin in their hand. That napkin was sent by me. I have one thing I want to ask. If you can describe where you at now through that napkin. Now I need for everybody to wait a minute right now before you do this. I want you to digress. Because I'm going to take you down so I can take you back off. So we got to land this plane for a while. Because in order for us to keep going and be prepared for the now and the next level, we need to digress so we can progress. So with that napkin, I'm asking the question, just one question, where are you at now? 
by using that napkin. Describe, oh, wait, wait a minute. When I do this exercise, a lot of times people don't want, no, no, want nobody to know where they're at. So, you know, we put on the front. But I gotta tell you a secret. Everything in your life will be exposed. So you can hide it, you think you're hiding. The more you hide, the more you're exposed. So, let's take the mask off. Amen. And let's get real. And if, I, if they can tell you about me, now we're gonna get real. <laughs> now, by using that napkin, describe you. Whatever way you wanna do it, where you at now? Right now. Where are you? By using that now. So I want you to take a moment and get your napkin and describe to me whatever way you want to do it. But I can see. Where you at now? Just use that napkin. that you can go in. You have options, you have, may have opportunity, but no matter which direction you're going in, you're always leading to the top. Um, if I open the napkin completely, I can see that, oh, my surface area gets a little bit wider, so I need to open, I need more paths, I need to open up to wherever the direction is that I'm going to get to the top of my mountain. Um, whichever way you have this square, there's always the top of the mountain. Um, so this shows me that at this point in my life, I'm climbing multiple mountains. And I don't cry in front of people, so this is um, hard for me. Um, as long as I get here, um, I'm not exactly sure which way I'm going sometimes, but I know that I'm getting to the top of whatever mountains I'm climbing because I already have my feet down to the ground. Um, I have um, experienced some things that made me put my feet down on the ground and continue to climb even when I didn't want to. So. Um, yeah, that's it. Always I do certain things like that because I want you to take self-evaluation of where you live. Because I usually get this and when I ask people to do this, some people just tear in half. And I know to do it with a lot of leaders. They tear in half, they almost just crumbled up. They said, I'm all over the place. And until you realize where you at, you cannot move any further. What you're going to be doing is you're going to be walking around and we're going to live up under the name of God. But still toe up. We're going, to, we're, we're, we're going to still be in the house of God. We're going to still jump and leap. And we're going to be giving God the praise halfway. Empty. So 
So now it's time for us to change that. So that when we truly give God the praise, even though things begin to happen, we still gonna know that it's all good. Cause somebody say it's all good. It's all good. Listen, now we'll get all that out of the way. Oh, I come, my task has been to um, talk about uh, from home uh, to the marketplace. Can I tell y'all a story? I know we don't talk that story today, but I really want to tell you a story. I, you heard the bio, and a lot of that was achieved through pain. Let me just tell you, I don't want to go too far back. I am a mother of three children. I have my grandbabies, two twin grandboys, and my son. Amen. Bless the Lord. I'm just gonna say it. But amen. But I I recently, three years ago, my 23-year-old died of a massive heart attack. Boom. My whole world stopped. Because prior to that, I'm product of a divorce, been through a divorce and was in the process of that. I was a manager. I worked for General Electric. Had about 65 direct reports. About three, I think three, three to four managers and I think nine or 10 uh, leads. In the midst of this, I'm going through a divorce. And I have always been a private person. I was the person that was on my job. I did not know I had children. You could knew that I was married because my name was Carol Walker Pitts. But I knew how to manage at work, and I knew how to manage at home. And so what I was doing was, I would handle it all. My husband, he traveled all over the world. And I get a phone call one day from a 19-year-old to tell me she was with my husband. She had just lost a second baby. Now wait a minute, hold on. I'm climbing the ladder in corporate America. Mm -hmm. Everything looked good. Mm -hmm. Oh, we live very well. Riding hard, as they were saying. And I was, I was out there mentoring to others. How dare my home be affected? How dare this man that I stay committed to be out here cheating? Now, we find out there was a little bit more. The same man had a sexual addiction. Uh-oh. Oh, yeah, I don't get real quiet now. And so in the midst of this, it leaks. Because I had a best friend that was my work best friend. You, you, you had a work best friend? Yeah. But my work best friend did not like the fact that I became her head manager. It was a hidden agenda. I didn't realize it at the time. Long story short. She told me, remember I'm private, I'm in control, and I'm not to be shaken. Now I'm one of the ones that I demand attention when I come in the room. Yeah, I'm the I and the D. And so I want everything in control at my word. Then I find out my child been molested. Mm. Two weeks later. Back right for that, one child run away from home. But I'm still working. And I'm happy to go to work. Mm. I still keep this up. Mm. Waiting on the police to call me to say, you found my child. And I'm still having to hear everybody else's issues at work. Remember, I'm in control. So now I refuse. 
I'm talking to the young lady who's 19 years old and told me she felt sorry because of what my husband done to me. And I said, no baby, I feel sorry for you because I can't touch you, but what did God deal with you? In the midst of this whole conversation, I began to offer Christ to this same young lady. The same young lady said, because of who you are, I gotta let your husband go. She said, I can't do this anymore. And I respect what you walk in. See, ladies, I'm trying to tell you something. I heard people saying about the crown. In order to wear a crown, baby, crown come with statue. It come with character. And the queen, the crown was between 2.5 to 4.9, the crown. The queen, queen said, you have to have stamina and character to wear the crown. Because if you wear the crown and you tilt your head, it can break your neck. So when you're wearing a crown, you have to know that crown come with character, boldness, and stamina. So you make sure that you have some substance in you when you wear the crown. So now, here it is. All of this going on, and I got to go to work. Mm. How to still be a manager. Mm. How can I manage when my house is out of control? How can I be all that I can be? God, what is it that you want from me? Mm. Why is I'm here? Yes, yes. I did everything for everybody. Why am I here? Now I sat for two weeks and wouldn't let my husband know. And now I'm saying I'm getting ready to leave and he said, you're not going anywhere. Now he holds me in the house with the children for three hours hostage. You're not going nowhere. What do you mean? And now I gotta learn my skills that I know. And the skill that I knew they used to tell me I had a gift for gab. Mm. That's what the world called it. Mm -hmm. But it's a difference when you're in the house of God. Well. <laughs> I have a presence. And the presence that I had. He said that I'm going to use you, Carol, right here. Why would you let my husband mistreat me? Why would you do that to me, God? He said, I didn't let him do it. I'm a God of free will. And trust me, Lord, I need for you to stay straight. He said, because if you stay straight, I'm going to deal with the ones that have dealt with you. That's why I don't talk too much about the enemy. Because the enemy is already defeated. I talk about victory. Because for every round, go high and high with me. That's why every time it's time for another level, that means I got to gird up. Amen. And so when I gird up my loins, I'm girded up with knowledge and wisdom. Because see, I've been in the classroom too long. And see, when you're in the classroom, I used to tell somebody about this story, Miss Smith. Miss Smith was teaching us. Woman of God, and, and when Miss Smith was teaching us, she was training us. And, and Carol Walker, turn around. Oh, I, I, you know, I was Miss Social Butterfly. I want to make sure everybody else was good. Because the reason why I want to make sure everybody else was good, because I had not yet identified who I was. It was pleasing to me to make sure everybody else was okay. Yes. Because that means that it, kept, it caused me not to look at myself. Well, I wasn't judging nobody. Mm -hmm. I just wanted to help everybody. Yes. So, Miss Smith said, I need you to turn around. So it came testing time. And when testing time came, I looked at the test. And I said, Miss Smith, Miss, Miss Smith, she wasn't sitting there. Miss Smith, Miss Smith, she still wasn't sitting there. I said, but she said, yes, Carol Walker. I said, Miss Smith, I don't understand what this test, she said, Carol Walker. When I was teaching you, when I would give you the instructions, you were playing. You were laughing. You were focusing.
disposed of everything else. I gave it to you. I sent you home with it. I told you to study it. And now you asking me, I gave you everything. I forewarned you what was going to be on this test. And now that the test is here, he, he said that I, when I was talking, you were talking. So when the test go on, I stop talking. She said, now I need for you to stop talking. Take the test. A lot of times when we're going through tests, we're still asking God why. When he already equipped you before the test even started. See, when you're in something, you already got it. You already quit for it. And so what happens is you're saying, God, why me? Why not you? See, the problem is now we find that we got men out of place. We got women all over the place. And you got the children this place. So that's what's going on now. And so as long as we don't understand ladies our place, we can't go to the next level. And see, because what happens is you can't even identify. Because people say, well, I'm in my season for crying. It was my season to die. It was my season to grow. It was my season to elevate. It was my season to hear. Every season is your season. That's right now. All of my, to see everybody, so a lot of people want the mountaintop experience. But don't nobody want to go through the valley. See, in the valley, that's where you're growing. In the valley, that's where you expand. So now, so then, so when you begin to expand, you'll understand about how you deal with your city. Because you can't take care at home, baby, when you get into the marketplace, you ruining the whole thing. So God wants us to be valuable in our home. We have to know who we are and whose we are. I understand that we're perplexed on every side. And situations happen. But remember, you already got the equipment. And the only thing you need to do is use what you got. Now, hold on, let me, let me say that quickly. Because some people are using what they got with the ignorance of what they learned from people who were unwise. Because, see, they have told the women to lay on their back. Baby, I said, get on your knees. They ain't get on your knees. They ain't nothing but to pray. Let me talk to you. See, y'all don't want to talk to me. And I said, I'm going to come and bring a real to you now. See, because if you don't have to sell yourself, nor sell for anything. But you got to learn who you are. And what has to happen is, we got to learn how to die to what we think we know. I tell people this a lot. When I was in the airport, I was looking for Delta uh, uh, Internet. And because our brain so busy trying to find information, I need an answer. I need an answer now. That's why it's so hard for us to wait on God. Because we want something now. Right? So I'm in the, I'm in, I'm in the airport. I'm in the airport. I'm in the airport. And while I'm in the airport, uh, I got buffering. Anybody know what buffering is? Yeah. Okay. And it was buffering. And I said, hmm. That's my life sometimes. I'm so busy trying to hit escape, escape. I'm gonna say it again. I'm so happy, I'm so busy trying to hit escape, escape. It won't let the process go on. I'm trying to escape, 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 escape. Because what happens is, you have to understand, it's gonna either, when it stop turning, it's gonna tell you no connection, or it's gonna go on through. But either way, it's going. It gonna stop, but where is gonna stop at? Mm. So here I am, I'm in the airport, and I'm trying to have a hit, hit escape because I did not want to wait. Mm -hmm. I want it now. Yeah. I got a microwave mentality. Yeah. Give it to me now. Mm. And so if I keep getting everything now, when trials and tribulation come, guess what happens? Wow. I don't know how to handle it. So here I am, mind trying to hurry up and get close. I got something I got to do. So he kept buffing, 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 buffing. God said, so, it, so what I'm trying to do is let it connect to something. So it showed up. It says Wi-Fi, and it had Stevens, and it had uh, 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 iPhone. It. So I'm just trying to connect to the people that around me. Service. I was looking for something. 
When you're looking for something, you may connect to the wrong side. And what happens when you connect to the wrong source? Then you try to figure out how did I get here? And they can talk about Deborah Cox either. Because we're so thirsty to get to something but haven't achieved anything. So the baby said that that paper is thin. How thick is your relationship with God? Because the more you have the relationship with God, the thicker that paper becomes. That's right. That's right. Because that paper that's thin now, baby, when you get the greater relationship with God, it'll hide you. Hallelujah. In a secret place, even while you're going through. That's right. I keep on telling you. So now, I, I, I didn't come to, you know, switch me. I, I got to tell you the story because I said, God, what you, what you want me to do? God, you don't want to talk about. He said, open your mouth and say what I said to say. So last night, when Dr. Dorsey was talking, I heard God say, Proverbs 31 woman. Yes. He said, in order for the ladies to go to the next level, they must know the character of how to get there. I said, well, okay. That's <laughs> okay. Then I heard God say, Tell them that I called them to be a transform. Who mm. shall? See, when you, we are in corporate America and we at home, some of us wives, some of us a, a husbands, some of us TTs, and, and, and y'all know what I'm talking about, that TT, that TT. Okay, so, so, so we're doing a whole lot of things. So we have to transform our thinking. We have to present our body as a living sacrifice, holy and accepted unto God, which is our reasonable service. So we have to change our mindset of what used to be to be able to walk into our now. So that means that the way I used to think, I can't take that in. Because what happens is it's old. And why is I'm using old data, outdated information for my new season? Well, come on now. So what happens? You gotta transform. And you y'all y'all remember the transform, I guess I'm on my TV. Yeah, I'm and the transformer, they were cars. Yes. And they knew how to ride. Their main job was to ride, you thought. But when something came up, they transformed into a fighter. That's right. <laughs> now, how did something low begin to rise up high no. when it was time to fight? <laughs> God said, I'm going to keep you whole low in humility. But when it's time to fight, I'm going to rise you up higher. Right. And I'm going to pull, because i got to pull you away from your situation to let you look down and say, baby, you ain't even worth it. Hey, that's that's when you're going to tell your hater to take a seat because you ain't going to be able to stand for the next level I'm going to. All right, all right, all right, all right. Now, Pastor, I hear all of that. And you tell me going to church. I can't hear the pastor on Sunday. I don't call H. Hockey stick, whatever you call it, L, L, all week long. I can't even function on how I'm going to make it. Finances are all over the place. My mind is too. And you telling me that I got to put God, who I thought was taking care of me anyway, what you mean, where I got to put him at? You gotta put it first. <laughs> Hold on, somebody hear me. You gotta put it first. See, because if you can't put Jesus first, what you end up doing is you will make him optional and you'll treat him as your pimp. Mm. Hey. Oh, I'm sorry. I was in the wrong place. I'm sorry. <laughs> They didn't send me here for that. Okay, okay. Okay, okay. Digress, good. Digress. Digress. And so, but despite of all of this, I come to tell you how valuable you are and who you are. Because in order for you to go to the next level, or to even start your level, you got to first know who you are. And I heard a lot of people talk about insecurities. 
And a lot of times when I, when I counsel people and, I, and they tell me that they were dealing with insecurities, I said, who told you that? They said, what do you mean? I said, who told you that? I said, because they keep bringing me back to the knowledge of when Adam and Eve was in the garden. And, and God said, Adam, where am I? Adam, because he visited Adam throughout the cool of the day. Adam, where am I? Adam, because Adam was out of place. He don't disobey God. And when we come out of place, that's when we start trying to hide ourselves from the true presence of God. Don't took up sewing classes. <laughs> they don't have one on one home ec. They ain't got sewing up them an outfit. <laughs> to make themselves presentable yeah. before God.
that when anything in God is good, it is all good. As we would say, it's good in the neighborhood. But the Proverbs 31 woman, I'm going to go through this quick. She had virtue. And then the proper woman, if you have virtue, what it tells you is that she has presence. Uh huh. And she was worthwhile. Ah, uh, she had some wealth in her. She had stamina. Proper 31 woman. And when people, I want to tell you this right here for the people that who may not know. When they said the Proverbs 31 woman, you know they're speaking in some where it, it talks about in marriage. Proverbs 31 is a woman. So the biblical history tells you of the still of the woman. And it's telling you some of the characters of a Proverbs 31 woman. So it does not mean that you have to be married. I'm, I'm just talking to you. But it does give you the character of what, how you're supposed to act when you are married. So hold on. It says that. She's called virtuous, and that means that she's called to be capable. Whoa, Jesus. That means you already have it. Proverb 31 woman. It says she's faithless. Meaning that she's called to speak truth. The problem that we find out now, we lie to our own self, so how are we going to tell the truth to somebody else? I asked people outside, I said, baby, how you doing? How did you get him? If I could just, every time I hit their shoulder, I, want to just, I just want to talk off. What do you mean you don't know? Yes, you do. You know. The thing is, do we want to be able to say it so that we can get past it? I said we're going to the next level now. You ready? Yes. Yeah. It says that. It said that she provides enrichment for our lives and live and lives of others. So if you are faithful, that means that you got quality not just for you. You got some hand down qualities. You got some DNA in you that can be able to pass down. And that means there's a legacy inside of you. Proverb 31, woman. It said that's goodness in her. So that means that she good to her family. She good to her husband. She good to everybody that she meets. I, you know, my mom used to tell me a long time ago, baby, so you never know who you entertain, you're entertaining. When everything that comes out of your mouth should be edified and building up for the body of Christ. And we, we said, sisters, we got to stop tearing each other down. Well, I can't, I, can't tear, I can't bring you up if there's nothing inside of me if I'm an empty vessel. But the vessel is not being empty to be filled up by God. It's empty to continue to be uh, repetitive. We continue to have hurt and hurt and hurt. The question is, what made you hurt? Mm. Who told you what you was? Who said you were qualified? Mm. Who said it? Because the day you go today, I hear you over You're going to speak to that very thing called it. I want to sum it up real quick for you. Anybody, oh, let me talk to my mature people because I know my cat, my millennial. Anybody remember the Adam family? <laughs> well, in the Adam family, there was a cousin named It. It always showed up to the party. <laughs> you could never understand because it ain't gibberish. <laughs> but he always showed up at the party. I ask you, what is your it that keeps showing up at your party? <laughs> when you are celebrating, having a good time, and telling That's showing up. Cousin it. Is it cousin it? What's up under your hair? Cousin it said, Roots. The reason why we're going through a lot of things because there are things that's been generational root yes. down so long. And we 
on that devil, honey, when you need him, you can jump and leave it. You can tell everybody, oh, it was a good time. But baby, I'm going to take your memory before you get to the parking lot. You better hear what I'm trying to tell you. Who is it? Glory to God. I've been sitting here, you know, I hear that. It sounds so good. I'm so motivated. I'm ready to go to the next level. And boom. Will the Earl call you? <laughs> you been on that with them women? Half of them ain't got nobody. That's what he said. I've been with you. Then here come Queen. Girl, I, if I, you could be somewhere with that money. I ain't, ain't no need to be going. What, what y'all talking about? And you tell me. Child, please, you could have you could have heard that on television. T D J was talking about something like that the other day. And we're talking about we're going to the next level. And now I'm waiting on something to come. And now it seems like it got delayed because guess what? The enemy wants you to say, it ain't coming. You shout it for nothing. Don't go back next year. 2020. And I, and I ain't got 2020 vision. What? <laughs> I, I didn't come here. Oh, I'm feeling in the wrong place. Okay. Okay. And I don't have none of my own barriers. I got to try to make it to the park like I'm going to say. Oh, I got it. Oh, you got me down. I got you. Okay. okay. So, what happens? What is that it? Because we're asking ourselves the question. Why? Why? Do I keep going to the same repentant cycle? God, I'm showing up for you. I'm praying. What's wrong? You showing up in self. You didn't disconnect. See, when you were sitting in the airport, you connected to the wrong source. Because you couldn't wait on me. I was cycling some stuff. It said, as the angels were doing, I was clearing out the airway for you, but you couldn't wait on the storm to end. So what you did, you want to fix your own, you want to take shelter yourself. I didn't tell you to take shelter. I told you to walk through the storm. Ooh. I gave you power to walk through it. I ain't telling you that you had to run from it. He said, because guess what happened? I will clothe you. I will coach you yes. to be able to get through any storm that you yes. got. He said, because I am Jehovah Jireh. I am your provider. I am Jehovah. I am your healer. I am your way maker. He said, but well, what I need for you to do is become my friend. I will call you a servant. I'll call you my friend. And so no weapon form against you shall prosper, for you shall be more than a conqueror. Now, when you walk into a place, the atmosphere got to change. Why it got to change? He said, because great is he that's in me, that he is in the world. I said, virtuous woman, you want to go to the next level? You want to clash your own mouth. You happy. 
And you got everybody around you. If you're happy and you know it, clap your hands. sacrifice the child and I was the child and they would take cigarettes and burn put them out on me so I come home my mom had to remarry uh, to the man I didn't find out until I was 8 years old would my dad because he never ever showed me any difference I ran I don't know who this is because the Holy Ghost will switch me, so I gotta be obedient. I ran and I ran, became rebellious because I didn't get permissions because there was a promise on my life. So I went, I didn't, I wouldn't like the other some that was statistics say that they out there sleeping around because of molestation. That wasn't me. I became a control manipulator. I wasn't going to let no one get that close to me because I didn't trust you. And so what I did was, as long as I stayed in control, you couldn't get me. I was still damaged. And I didn't realize it. So now, I didn't tell my mother because if I told my mother, I didn't think she was mature enough to handle it. I'm eight years old now making these type of decisions. They always say I was, I was older than time. I'm, I, so I didn't tell my mother until I was 34. I didn't tell my father because I knew my father would, would um, kill his own. So I had two problems. So I didn't get to see my real, my real grandparents. And when my grand, by the way, at eight months, my uncle killed my grandfather because my grandfather was the one that was so crazy about me. So he got killed that day and he said, where's the baby? My mother said that something, something told her to take the baby and put the baby up under the bed. And it said, said something then said, take the baby and cover the baby. Said all the bullets went to go, flying through the house. She was in another room. She said, I never said a mother's word. 
In the same time, at eight years old, there was something that I would be seeing. And I told my mother, mother, that is something I'm seeing on the wall. I see two things fighting, something with big angels. And I see something else that it looks real bad and dark. Didn't know that. It was a gift upon my life. And I come to tell somebody that the things that the enemy was trying to do in your life was to kill you, for you keep you from being here today. And so at 34, I tell my mother, she said, why didn't you tell me? I said, I didn't think you were mature enough to handle it. She said, eight years old, were you thinking like that? Then she began to tell me all the other things of how I used to think. But insecurity had me bound because people around me could not understand my intellect, so they dogged me out, so I had to conform to them. So because if I conform to them, I can hang around them. Mm -hmm. So I wasn't trying to get them to come to my level because I understood that my level, I couldn't find nobody there. So I just went down to them. Mm -hmm. So I hung in the project. I hung in the dope traps. And everywhere I hung, they kept telling me, you don't belong here. Yeah. I got, I, I was hanging with the dope boy. They said I belong there. They said I was the one. They said I was a snitch. I'm gonna go. Because I told this this beauty came with a cross. But the cross was on the cross. I, I ended up, I was hanging with my, my, my friends, and they and, and, and they were dancing, you know. And I ain't talking about no tutu dancing. You know. They called a pole here and there, you know what I mean? For the babies. And I found myself going to those places. Talking to them and telling them it ain't worth it. Didn't know the call would throw it on my life. I come to tell somebody, with all of that, he loved me. All of this went on until I had to say, it's time for my reveal party. It was time for the eight year old girl to be talked to by the 34-year-old woman. And the eight-year-old girl had to stand before the 34-year-old woman, and the 34-year-old woman had to tell the eight-year-old girl, you survived. Because my life stopped at eight. I went through a process along the way. But the 34-year-old girl, the woman, had to tell the eight-year-old girl, you survived. Tell you, whatever that moment was in your life, you survived. Whatever your age is today, go back and tell that girl you made it. And all the things then was outdated. It's outdated. Y'all missed that. Go back and tell her I made it. Somebody said, I made it. Now, you got a girl play. Mental illness has crept in a whole lot. And what mental illness has done it has crippled so many. And what it, what it has done and when, it's, when it cripples you, it keeps you bound. And it tells you, because I am a, I'm, I'm a problem, I'll tell you that in a minute now. I just told somebody earlier that tell you, but I said now, I, I'm, I, I am, as a counselor, I am an advocate for some folk need some medicine so I can talk to you. So I can bring you calm down, so I can get to you, and then I know that you can be delivered off the medicine. Because I also know that right there, mental illness is not of God. The word of God says that there should be no sickness among me. So I also know that when Jesus went around, that's what he went for, to heal the lame and the sick. One prime example, there was a woman who was cutting. 
there were many people that were trying to commit suicide. Depression happens. And what the enemy wants you to do is have you check shame and guilt because you have, you're dealing with depression. And somebody told me when I, 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 I let me just tell you this. I had to go, I went into, um, I can't think of the name of the place now, but it's, it's in Camp Creek. I went to, um, cause I wanted to commit suicide. After all of this, people don't prophesy over my life, but then nobody gave me instructions. And that's what I'm gonna give you. Because if you would not be able to make it unless you get instructions. They told me, baby, stand on the word. Go, I ain't nobody standing on the word to me. You want me to get on the Bible and stand on it? What you want? What you talking about? I, I had to learn what that meant. So I had to make sure that you give me some substance. Give me something that I can leave with. Okay? When I show up at, I can't think of the name of the place. But anyway, I showed up there. And I said, I need to be admitted in. My ex-husband, he going with me now. My mama going with me. Because I lost my mind. I had three children. And I couldn't remember who they were. And my aunt said, baby, those your babies. Don't you have something to be thankful for? I'm trying to tell you, I know how it feel when you can't remember. I know how it feel when you don't understand. I know how to feel when you, everything was good and all of a sudden you take it off, you derailed. And I couldn't understand why would God put me through that. He said, because I got to let you know every situation. Because what I got coming to you, baby, you going to be able to empathize and you going to be able to stand in the gaps and fight for them. But I can't do that unless I what? Went through it. Now I'm in a mental institution here come a janitor. I'm suicidal, remember? And I'm homicidal. Because I will roll that joker over with my expedition. <laughs> see, see, you know we so cute. You know, I will gonna take him back. Apart. How dare you? You don't wreck my whole life. Well, guess what? They had me. You know, when, you, when you're like that, they put you by the nurse's station for 24 hour watch, right, for observation. They put me in a room by myself. Huh. What is this? And my aunt dropped a book on the bed. And the book said, Battlefield of Mind. That was my it. Because it was telling me all the stuff that my family has spoken and said stuff I wasn't even present of. See, a lot of us are dealing with stuff that they said back in the day that you don't even remember. You was a child, and now they're telling you about it, and so now you're reliving it now, and baby, you it had already passed, but see, when you were little, see, baby, this right here was going on, so now you're living it. And it wasn't even for you to live. That's what's going on. And it's a repetitive cycle. So then, so when you get old, you tell your children. See, when your grandma would live, when you, when I would live, so 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 so, so and then and then and then and then and then, repetitive cycle. I ain't gonna never get married. Guess what? You just spoke it over your life. Life and death at the time. Fast forward. I'm in this room. Now, here come a Caucasian lady. She had an abusive relationship, real bad. Now I'm sitting here talking to her. She leave. Another lady come in. She was a cutter. I said, what makes you cut? I was just trying to find out all the information. I didn't know why I would answer these questions. They were like I was interviewing them. She leave. Three days. So now I go to the, so everybody was going up every day. Because it was taking mad time. So I go to the first day. They said, mad time. I go up to the, to the desk. Carol Walker Pitts. They said, we got no medicine for you. Everybody around me tore up. They, they drove to the pigs. Okay, that's, that's okay. So I go to, so I'm, I meet with the, the psychiatrist. I said, uh, they didn't give me no medicine. He said, I'm not giving you any. He said, because you're not depressed. Oh, I am depressed. I want to take He said, you're not depressed. He said, you have a, a cute. What's cute about depression? <laughs> I said, so I'm mad, so I wanted some. 
I wanted something to give me some medicine. So I said, I got, I said, I got a rash on my feet. Can I get something for that? I gave you that. Many times, I said, I knew he gonna give me something. Carol walked in and said, we don't have no medicine for you. Three days, on the third day, the nurse said, you got to go. We, we, we now finna let you go because the people we keep putting in your room, they keep leaving and saying they all right. Y'all missed that point. <laughs> I'm switching it for you. You ready to go up? Are you ready to go? Yes. Yes. What God did for me and what he did through me, even in my times of trials and tribulation, he was still using me. I didn't know what was in me because I had not yet tapped into me. Oh, no. I didn't know that. And so here, 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 here I'm in a group talking to people and I'm talking to them. And then so I didn't realize that they was some mental, mental, mental illness that was going on. But he was a doctor and lawyer, because I'm going to be at the bed now. I'm going to stay there, I'm going to be at the bed now. Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay. <laughs> mm -hmm. That's another thing. Stop, stop selling. Don't settle. Because if you settle, I, I want you to stop selling for anything but settle in to God. Yes. Yes. Repeat after me. I will not settle, will not settle for, anything, for anything. But I will settle, I will settle in, God. in God. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I got I, I got I got these right here. And I'm gonna sit down because y'all 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 don't want that. A money making person rise in the morning. Proverbs 31 woman says she got a beard. See, money move in the moment. <laughs> People say, why are you, why are you not sleeping? Because, baby, I'm, I'm planning. You got to get up early in the planning season. And what the enemy is doing now is that it's taking your memory. It's taking your mind. Because as long as you take your memory and your mind, you can't think of the next plan. And you can't get the instructions. Number one, learn how to obtain instructions. Number two, reevaluate where are you getting your information. Take no counsel from the ungodly. Don't go give me that quote that, you know, God talked to a donkey. He did. He talked to because the donkey submitted unto God. That's why the donkey was able to talk. <laughs> Oh, he can use anybody. He can when they want to be used. Number three. The proper woman was strong. So that means she had strength. You got to know that you have all power through God. You cannot have power unless you connect to the power source. She said it last night. But who is the power source? Is Jesus Christ. You cannot have power because not by my might, not by power. 